Welcome to our Piney Pastors podcast. We are <clears throat> recording today, um, well, for a very specific purpose. Uh, most of our podcasts are kind of, uh, they're all related to Piney Research, but a lot of them are more general, theological, or having to do with um, just general church life and practice. Today is very specific in that we're going to be talking about um, our worship gatherings, meeting again on Sunday mornings for worship, and uh, this is... Starting this Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day. Correct, yes, 2020. Mother's Day. And Happy so Mother's I guess... Day to all the mothers out there. Indeed. Yes, early or... Uh, or if they watch this on Sunday, then it would be perfect timing. I guess we'll do the intro thing since we normally do that. My name's Nathan Smith. On this screen to my left is... Um, the youngest of the pastors. That's me. If you couldn't tell, Steve and I are not the same age. Who's I'm me? Jason Myers. Jason okay. Myers. Yeah. And I'm Steve Hopped. It says Stephen on my picture, so, you know, I'll go with Stephen. Yeah. 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 Like I said, today we're going to be talking about <clears throat> our uh, Sunday worship gatherings and resuming those. And um, <clears throat> so the, here in Missouri, state regulations uh our state orders have um opened up things for businesses and for, for churches and so on um but there's still freedom in <clears throat> what uh what churches want to do so first thing we wanted to talk about is just to address that question of why we are gathering back at this time so mm -hmm. why do we feel like this is a good time to go ahead and and start gathering back together I think that the first reason would be um, why we would gather before COVID-19. The reason why we normally gather anyway is but we believe that it's good. We believe the Bible commands it for the people of God to gather together. <clears throat> we believe that it's a, a beneficial thing for us, that the, the, uh, um, the body of Christ, Christians are not meant to walk this road alone. And so we do it together. <clears throat> and ultimately, because it's honoring to Jesus, I believe that it shows and it speaks of his value and the way we value him when we gather together and set aside, set aside time to come together with his people to worship him. And ultimately it's all about him. Um, so I think that, yeah, that that's, um, that's why we are doing what we're doing. Um, I think that um, it is important to note that though we are gathering back together in part because we believe it's, it's good, it's beneficial and it's honoring to Jesus. That doesn't mean that, um, that there are some who, who are not able or ready to come back yet to the gathering of, um, of the people of God on, in the church building, and that's okay. Um, we know that, and we don't think that that necessarily means that they're doing something bad or unbeneficial or dishonoring to Jesus, um, <clears throat> that there are uh, ways to apply the commands of God, and there are um, different contexts of how that makes sense. And so uh, there are some people who are just not ready or able to do so, and we, we get that, and so... Um, we are wanting to have a, we're still planning to have um, our, our services live on YouTube. And maybe the difference is that <clears throat> they won't be uh, in two or three different uh, videos where they'll have a recording and you'll have to right. live and live again, but it'll all just be live on YouTube. Um, However, so, I will talk like a robot if, if it will be helpful. That, that would be, especially <clears throat> if you could freeze up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so I think that's one of the reasons just that we think it's a, a, a very good, commanded, biblical, beneficial, healthy, and Christ-honoring thing. Uh, but just in general, why are we coming back again now during this time when there are some people who are um, unwilling to do that, maybe some people who think that it's wrong or, or foolish to do so? Um, we believe that the, um, the, the government officials and the, um, the health professionals have said that there's there's no undue risk at this point, uh, provided we take necessary precautions to gather back together. And so we agree with that. Um, and we do plan to take some precautions and do things a bit differently. But um, yeah, we, we don't think that it is, we, we don't think that the, 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 the potential risk outweigh the fact that it is still good, beneficial and honoring to Christ at this point for most of us. Right. Right. Yeah. And we'll talk some more about, um, well, probably at length about some of the precautions that we intend to put in place. And uh, probably the most um, noticeable and prominent thing would be that we are planning on having two separate gatherings, one 
at nine and one at <clears throat> 1030. And the reason that we're doing that is um, that the order from the state level is for any gatherings, it's not just churches, but for any gatherings of large groups of people that there's no limit on the number of people that can be a part of those gatherings, but there is still the stipulation that we maintain social distancing of six feet <clears throat> between family groups. So practically for us at Piney Ridge with the number of chairs and space that we have, that means having two worship gatherings. Um, that is assuming that a majority of people will want to come and be a part of those gatherings, which judging from the responses we got from the survey we sent out, that seems pretty likely. So that's, we're just kind of putting all those things together going, seems like the vast majority of people are going to want to gather, um, provided we make some, put some precautions in place. Um, if we're keeping six feet between everyone in the, in the um, auditorium <clears throat> with seats, that just means we're gonna have to have two gatherings. So yep. decided on nine and 10 and 30, um, and that's, again, that this isn't preferable for us. None of us really like the idea of having two gatherings. If we thought there was a better option, we would probably take it a better option, uh, taking all the different factors into account. <clears throat> um, but this is what we feel like is best to do for now. And as, um, as things, you know, from the government change and directives will we're going to continue reevaluating that, but that's what we feel like would be best to do now. And, and the reason we talked about this in, a, in the previous podcast, um, what do we call that one? Just like online, online worship or something like that, something like that. where we talked about why we feel, um, have felt that we should not be gathering up to this point. Well, Jason already kind of touched on this, that, uh, because the, the government orders have changed, that's changed our, um, approach to this. Um, and so we still, if, if you have more questions after this about why are we gathering, why would we not gather, um, we'd refer you back to that podcast. But essentially, uh, we believe that the Bible indicates that we should respect our governing authorities. That is part of our honoring of God and his authority is honoring the, the authorities that he has put in place over us. Um, and so that's why we don't feel um, that we should just come back together business as usual kind of, and everyone can hug and get as close as they want to be, um, which is what we all want to do, but right. yeah. um, it would be, we believe dishonoring to the governing authorities um, and there's, there's different views on whether it would actually be um, unwise and un, unsafe to be together. But that's not really the question that we're addressing um, because there's a lot of different, different reports, different um, analyses of, you know, the, um, the danger. But what we're really looking at is um, what is the government saying at this point and how can we uh, submit to that in a way that honors God. Yeah, so you don't have to like or even agree with um, somebody's decision or the way they came to it or whether they think it's safe or wise or necessary to do certain thing. But if right. uh, submission does not require that, you can still have a submissive action in heart um, while you don't agree with something. Right, right. So again, passages like Romans 13, um, 1 Peter 2, talk about submitting to the governing authorities or where we would go. Uh, on that and to the to the question that some have um, some at Piney Ridge but just kind of in the larger um, community of the church in America there's the question of <clears throat> well is this uh, a form of persecution you know should the church really or should the government rather have anything to say about how the church does corporate worship and um or is this a form of persecution, oppression, that we should just push back against? And should there be civil disobedience at this time? Yeah. Right, right, yeah. And our response to that would be that there, because there is no singling out of churches, um, we don't believe that this is persecution of churches. That um, if it came, you know, if if restaurants could open, if there, if people could have concerts and all these things were allowed, but not churches. Then we would say, no, this seems to be um, uh, 
a targeting of churches, and this is something that we should push back against. And and perhaps this should be a case for civil disobedience, but that's that's not what's happening right now. Um, and there's no uh, there's no command that is um, in this that's saying the government's not saying disobey Jesus in this particular area. We were just talking this morning about Exodus one, which is where we're going to be going next, and how. Um, Pharaoh was commanding the Hebrew midwives to commit murder by killing the male children that were born. And clearly, uh, well, they disobeyed that command and they, they didn't kill the male right. children. And clearly they were right for doing that. They should have disobeyed their governing authority of the Pharaoh um, because to, uh, to follow through with his order would have been to disobey a clear command of God. But we don't believe that that's the case here in um, maintaining social distancing does not require us to disobey, disobey Jesus in any way. Right. You guys have anything to add to that? No. Nope. Okay. So um, in order to do that, in order to honor the governing authorities, there's more to it than just having the chairs spread apart, although that's a big part of it. Um, there's some really practical <clears throat> things that we, uh, Monday night and talk through and we agreed on some things that we really in order to fully submit to what the government's saying and to not only for the for the sake of submitting to the government but also recognizing that there are um, people who will gather with us that have varying degrees of concern about safety and so mm -hmm. both out of <clears throat> um, submission to um, the government, but also out of submission to the law of love, seeking to be loving to one another, put as many precautions in place as, um, as we can and deem wise. That's what we're trying to do. So there's going to be some things that look different. And so Steve, can you just kind of walk us through what it's going to look like um, coming in from the parking lot on Sunday morning to our, one of our worship gatherings? And because uh, it's going to be, it's going to look and feel a lot different. So. It's going to look and feel different, and, and it's probably going to be our new normal for a while. Uh, it's not going to be what it was before we before coronavirus came for a while. And uh, so it's something that we just need to prepare our hearts for. Uh, we are going to, uh, to ask you to humbly submit to the social distancing requirements to uh, maintain six feet between yourself and, and other families. Uh, while you're in the building. Uh, and we're going to have some, we've, we've asked some deacons and maybe some members from the safety team and, and just maybe some other people in our church to, to help us with that, to remind us uh, if, if, we, if we forget. And I know that I'm, I'm one who I love to shake hands and, and, and talk to people. And so, you know, I need to be prepared to humbly submit to those people that we've asked to remind us to maintain social distancing um, mm -hmm. well, you know, we were talking about the, the passage from 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, starting in verse 12, and it says, We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with them all. And so I think that's a word to the leaders there to be patient. I think it's also a word to all of us that we need to be patient with each other and, uh, and we need to love each other. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in a, in a minute, but uh, just, just saying that we have asked some, some men to help us in that area to keep, to remind us uh, to maintain that social distance. So as you arrive at, at, at the church building and park when you come so building, let me just throw in something there. Um, I, I think being respectful um, in that case, just if someone approaches you and asks you to step back from someone, just consider <clears throat> that they're not really wanting to do that. They're, they're doing what we've asked them to do. Um, and, and so try to make it easy on them. Don't, even sometimes just making a joke about it is going to be unhelpful. So just, yeah. <laughs> just um, fully I'll, submit to that. Even receive the reminder and yeah, 
And, and I think yeah. that it, even if before and, and that, it, try to make it easy for them. <clears throat> and even before that, um, it, like you said, Steve, sometimes people just, we just forget we all do. Um, but um, don't, don't make it to where people have to come to you and say, Hey, because this is not just something if you, you read in first um, uh, was it first Thessalonians five, it, it doesn't just says, <clears throat> doesn't just say, Hey, leaders uh, admonish one another. It says brothers, like that's the church's job. So all Christians, everybody at Piney Ridge is responsible to stir one another up to obedience, to a Christ honoring obedience. And so that would, that's what this is in this case. So we shouldn't be right. um, waiting for somebody else to say something. And we also, um, <clears throat> it does not make it. Um, so where people have to remind us and tell us, like you said, sometimes we forget, but if, uh, if it's just on us, to say, hey, it's on us with our children, it's on us with our with our spouses, it's on us with ourselves and with each other to say, hey, we got we got to make sure we are honoring Jesus from from our, from with from within from our hearts, um, which means obeying the commands that God has given us. Amen. Yeah. So when you arrive uh, from the parking lot, you'll notice that the doors are propped open. If if you're coming in the main entrance. Uh, there will be some changes. For one thing, the lobby will be uh, blocked off and uh, there will be no coffee. Uh, what you will have, there are some tables where the communion elements will be uh, placed. And what we're asking is that one member from each family uh, go to the table and get enough elements or, or cups. Uh, there will be some for uh, gluten-free as well as, as the regular and to get enough for your family and then uh, proceed on to the auditorium. If you come in the Piney Kids entrance, there will also be a table there for you to get your communion supplies. And then we're gonna ask you to enter that, that door that's immediately in front of you into the auditorium. Uh, either way- Those will be propped open. Yes, they'll be propped open. Um, in the main, at the main entrance, the uh, family bathroom and the drinking fountain will be blocked off. Uh, we will have the restrooms in the main hallway, the men and the women's restrooms uh, open. We're going to uh, provide some modesty panels in front of each door so that we can keep those doors propped open as well. But anyway, we ask you then to proceed uh, directly to the auditorium where there will be some, some people there to help direct you to seats. What, what we're going to do, the, the Mike McCann Piney family is going to be working on Wednesday night to get the chairs set up and we're going to have and thank chairs. you to them oh yes, yes indeed. we're Doing so that. thankful <clears throat> to them uh they're going to have uh, groups of of two four and six like or you know set up in in rows but the rows will be uh separated in the seats some some in twos some in fours some in six sixes and then for families that are larger we'll have at least half of a section with complete rows of chairs that those people can uh, can sit in, uh, and and you'll be directed to the place where you need to sit. If if for some reason that you're a, a a mother with with a baby that you need to nurse and you're wanting to be in the back so that you can go to one of the cry rooms, uh, just ask just ask them to sit you back there. But otherwise, I, I think we'll generally try to see people from the front to the back as they arrive. And by the way, the cry rooms will be will be open only to uh, nursing mothers and the baby that they are nursing. So uh, we, we ask you not to take toddlers into the cry room to play with the toys, but to keep them with you at all times. And while I'm thinking about it, uh, we're gonna ask all parents to keep their children with them throughout the entire time that they're there. Uh, please don't let your children run around by themselves, uh, even to the extent that if you have children, let's say up to the age of of 10 that need to use the restroom, we're gonna ask you to accompany them to the restroom and back. Um, that way we can, we can help maintain that, that social distancing. And, and we know that, that that's not the norm that we've had here at Piney, Piney but we're just asking you to humbly submit to that uh, as well as these other things. Um, the gathering itself will be shorter overall. We're, we're going to plan it um, to be roughly an hour. Um, and so that hopefully will be helpful to, to parents that have smaller children because we won't have Piney Kids class time during this time. And we 
also won't have any coloring sheets or crayons available on the back tables. So we ask you uh, to bring things from home that you can help keep your younger children occupied. And, and this would be probably a good time if you have children, oh, third grade and up at least, to, to train them to, to pay attention. The, the gatherings are gonna be shorter. Train them to engage in the, the musical worship train them maybe to uh, take some, some notes during the sermon and uh, listen for key words. It'd be helpful probably to read the passage ahead of time and maybe discuss it in family worship before you come to the to gathering on Sunday morning. Exodus chapter one. Exodus yep. chapter one for this coming week. Uh, there won't be a meet and greet time in the middle, so, so that will take uh, out some of the time that we will have. And uh, we'll just go straight through, much like we've done in the past on the fifth Sundays. But like you said, Steve, too, that uh, one of the things that won't take up as much time either is that everyone will already have their communion cups. They won't have to go forward to get them and wait in a line to do that. Yes. And we'll have hand sanitizing stations uh, throughout the, uh, we'll at least have one, a couple in, the, in the, each of the areas for people coming through uh, from the out exterior doors and into the auditorium. Uh, when the gathering is over, we're going to ask you to be dismissed, uh, somewhat like at a wedding. We're going to dismiss the back rows first and then and go to the front. And those same um, men that will be directing to your seat will be uh, doing that. And this is really important, uh, especially after the first, after the nine o'clock gathering, because in between the two gatherings, we're going to have some people that will be sanitizing seats and uh, and door handles and and those people need to have uh, the ability to get to that <clears throat> so we're going to ask you to when you are dismissed and your row is dismissed to exit the building immediately if you want to socially distance in the parking lot and, and visit with people that that's fine but we ask you to do that outside and not inside the building um, but some of the things that as i mentioned we are, are trying to take precautions to help people and, and one of the things that we will do uh, after the first gathering is, is sanitize the seats and the door handles and things like that. Uh, we also will have trash cans in the back of the auditorium at each exit um, to, for you to throw your communion trash away. And that will really help us in getting, especially after the nine o'clock and getting the auditorium ready for the 1030 gathering. Yeah. What did I forget? Uh, I don't think you forgot anything. Um, something that I was going to mention earlier, but mm -hmm. um, fits in here just as well is that in order to um, have a uh, a good, in order to, to be able to accomplish the um, social distancing requirements, um, we are going to send something out um, to try to determine who's going to be at which gathering and um, so that we don't have, you know, 150 or 175 chairs out and we have 200 people show up for that gathering. Um, we're going to ask people to let us know ahead of time, which gathering they would like to be in uh, or which one they plan to be in. And then if we determine, okay, this is going to be too unbalanced, then we will have to um, adjust. But what we're, planning to do and uh, I'm supposed to be figuring out how, exactly how we're going to do this. I think we're going to use planning center, um, but basically let the, the people who let us know which gathering they're going to be in. Once, once that gathering is at capacity, then we're going to say after that, <clears throat> if people say, I'd like to come to the nine and the nine's full. We're going to have to say, sorry, it's uh, you're going to have to come at 1030. So uh, that is one other aspect of this is going to be very different. It's going to be probably, um, I don't think that's going to be, uh, most of these things are things that no one is going to love to do just because it can be so, so much different. Yeah. Um, some of the things that we've looked forward to the most about gathering back together of being able to hug people, being able to just stand around and shoot the breeze and catch up and, you know, um, even, uh, you know, I think for some people, Sunday morning worship gathering is a time where they're like, okay, my kids are safe. 
they're playing with other kids. I can take a minute and have adult conversations right now and not worry about them. That's not going to be the case now because we're asking um, families to stay very closely together. Um, so it's just all going to be really different. Um, and people have different views on, um, on how things should be going, on, on what the real risk is, um, all the way from people who think the risk is almost nothing minimal to those who are very concerned about you know, <clears throat> ongoing the risk with the coronavirus. And so recognizing that we have some very different views that this is gonna be hard for, for some people to take, just how different it's gonna look. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit before we wrap this up about just the, that relational aspect of how do we relate to one another knowing that there are widely varying views on this. So um, just wanna help shepherd you all through this a little bit. Amen. Not just give you the, hey, here's what we're doing. So um, Jason, would you speak to that a little bit just about how we should um, be thinking about this and how we respond to one another. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, I think our ultimate reason for why we are coming, uh, why we gather together in the first place is for the honor of Jesus. And that, um, wh what do we come to do? Do we come to fellowship? Yes. For the glory of Jesus. Do we come to, to, to serve one another? Yes. So that Jesus is honored. Do we come to sing praises? Yes. Praises mm -hmm. to Jesus. Are we coming to hear the word preached? Yes, so as to hear from and therefore return in uh, obedient faith and obedience to the honor of the Lord Jesus. So everything we're doing is to worship him. And it often, Nathan, you've talked about this before, but often for all of us, we can tend to think that the worship gatherings are primarily to please us. Um, if I leave and I don't feel like um, that was a uh, uplifting, encouraging, great time, then it must not have been. Right. When really the one who matters most is, is it must Jesus. not have been worship. Yeah. Right. It, mu it must not even have been a worship. If uh, <clears throat> it was a good or bad day of worship, depending on how I felt about it. And mm -hmm. if that's how the attitude we have coming into this, it won't be well. Um, because we'll, we'll leave going, I just, it just felt off. It wasn't the same, it was different. Um, there were parts blocked off. There were things I couldn't do. There were things I had to do. There are things I wanted to do and are normally look forward to doing aren't there. What do I do um, with that? And I think the answer in a very simplistic terms is worship Jesus. Like let him be Man. the focus. Does we come to worship him, not ourselves, not our preferences, not our desires, our even good and godly desires. Mm -hmm. It's okay um, to not like um, social distancing. I think right. that's actually appropriate. I think it's okay and it's good yeah. and right for us to, to long for things to be as they should be because, um, and as they will be one day, uh, maybe even one day soon, we'll be able to get back to a more of a normal um, a rhythm of things, but not yet. And in the meantime, let it create in us a greater longing to set our hope fully on the grace that will be brought to us, the revelation of Jesus Christ. When he returns, it will be Amen. that and only then will it be as it should be. Yeah. Amen. Um, and I think that another aspect of this worshiping Jesus is, as I talked about, that we come to, to fellowship and to serve one another for the glory of Jesus. So that, uh, Nathan, you mentioned the law of love. Like Jesus is the one who died because he loved us. The Father sent mm -hmm. his son because he loved us. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us by sending his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You cannot, you cannot preach the gospel without a message of love. Right. And that we, as it says in First Peter, that we have been born again into this gospel, into this message of love for brotherly love. And it there says, says, therefore, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Like that's what right. we should be seeking to do. Uh, <clears throat> we've been born again by this message, this gospel of love, this truth of love, Jesus' love for us, that it was not something we deserved. And so we should be in return doing that for each other. And one such passage that tells us this clearly is Philippians 2, uh, 1 through 11. I won't read the whole thing, but just the first couple of verses it says, so if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, that is fighting for unity. And do nothing from selfish ambition or, vain, or, or conceit, but in humility, 
Oh, that's huge. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. So some of you are going to be saying, hey, we don't think you're taking enough precautions. Others are going to say, I think you're taking, blowing this way out of proportion and taking too many precautions. And many are going to be all the way in between those two things. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Look each, uh, each, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And he says, have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to talk about how Jesus, the mind of Jesus, the humble way of Jesus was such that he willingly, his humility was so intense that he says, I will look not only to my own interests of my own flesh, but I will give myself up on the cross and I will die for you. We need to be willing to do what Jesus did by washing each other's feet. He said, this is, I, I, I've given you an example of how you should love one another, John 13. And here he's saying, Paul's saying that we should be like Jesus, have that same mindset, that same heart that says, I want to so love my brothers and sisters who have a differing opinion, a differing view, a differing feel about all of this. And I want to love them by not thinking that they're less spiritual than I am or they're less loving than I am because it, that, that's not necessarily the case. But even if it is, we should be patient with all and we Amen. should submit to the Lord Jesus by seeking to glorify him by being like him and willingly um, submitting ourselves to the needs and preferences of others. So I think that that is um, the, 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 the call for the day is to glorify Jesus. That's what we're there for by loving each other well in great humility mm -hmm. um, and uh, knowing that we're not going to all respond to each other, uh, respond to this the same way. And that's okay. We, we don't have to all have, when it says be of the same mind and full of court, it doesn't mean, and one accord, it doesn't mean that we all have, have the same opinions about what's going on in this world. It means we say right. that our, our mind, collective mind says that Jesus matters most. Our collective yeah. mind says that we're going to humble ourselves to serve each other and love each other well. And um, in that submission uh, is not, um, as we said, it's not just a submission to the government. Our submission to um, to the elders and to the deacons, the leaders of the church is not, it cannot be, it really just cannot be an outward thing because it's not true submission. If it's not, um, you know, Jesus says that uh, there are those who honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. If we come on Sunday and we say, I'm not going to do the social distancing stuff. That's stupid. Or, um, you know what, I, I'm going to show up. And I'm going to complain that there's not enough precautions take, being taken place. And why did they think of this? And why did they do this? Jesus says, you can sing all you want, but you're not worshiping me. Like, if you're going to love me, then you're going to love my bride, my people. Mm -hmm. and you're going to be humble to say, Jesus, you're the focus, not me. And that's hard for all of us. And I think it's yeah. right for us to, as I said, to acknowledge this isn't easy. Um, and that we should long for what's to come. And that we can pray for it. And as Nathan, if you guys haven't listened to Nathan's message from Sunday, go back and listen to it. Maybe listen to it again to say it's, it's okay and good and right for us to direct our questions to God and our complaints to God, but not to each other. Not this way. Like that, that that's the kind of grumbling, complaining that we're going to talk about in Exodus uh, that was not good, not honoring to the Lord. And so um, that we, we, we move on from that. We ask those questions, direct them to the Lord, and then... Serpents. Him to ask. Serpents. That's what you yes, get. Yes, that's what you get. Serpents. Fiery serpents. <laughs> and that ain't good for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you do what Nathan said at the end of his message, to claim the promises of God that he's still among us. He's still with us when we gather. And so our focus should be there mm -hmm. um, and not complaining about all the things that we can't do or, or have to do or don't have or whatever to say, God has been pleased by his spirit to show up amongst us in ways that we are uh, not able to see when we're complaining and looking around at everything else. Um, and so, yeah, glorify Jesus by loving each other with great humility and services. I think the call for the day and how we relate to one another. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Steve, anything you want to add to that? Um, I just, I think I'm going to read the first few verses of Ephesians four, if I may. Excellent. Yeah. I think, um, let me say this and then we can just close with that. Um, okay. That um, while we don't want to encourage grumbling and complaining, if you feel you have what are legitimate concerns, if you, um, from what we've shared, if you go, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like there's a gaping hole here that they haven't thought about. Um, we would like to hear from you about that. Um, so you can email us, prcpastors at pioneerchurch.org. Uh, if you have our numbers or 
we do have a directory. Not everyone has that, but it's an app. If you have that, our numbers are in there. Um, you can contact us that way. Um, claim, we have talked about this a lot. We've met with the deacons. Um, they had a lot of wisdom, things to help us Amen. think through. We have prayed. Really, really appreciate them. We've <clears throat> prayed about it. And yet we recognize that there are things that we could have just missed. So mm -hmm. um, if, if there are things that you feel like would be helpful for us to hear and think through, then go ahead and reach out to us. But I think this would be a great passage to close this podcast with Steve. Okay. So yeah, if you would read. I Ephesians. might say on Jason's behalf that maybe they should contact Nathan or Steve this week. It's a good call. Yeah. Because <laughs> I will be Since Jason's going to be, yeah. right. Uh, well, I want to start with the first part of Ephesians 4, which says, I, therefore, Paul speaking, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And then Ephesians 4 closes with these, with these words, starting verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from, from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. We look forward to seeing you all Sunday, Piney Ridge Church.